Hello and welcome to the JK Feather Ranch channel. Today we're going to do something a little different and focus on the actual ranch part of the JK Feather Ranch. I'm back here at our chicken coops where it is over 100 degrees today. So they definitely need some type of cooling to keep them nice and comfortable. So we installed this mister system here and uh, we used to get by just uh, controlling it with this valve over here. We'd come out in the morning and turn things on and come back out in the evening and turn them back off. But that gets a little annoying after a while. So I went ahead and put together this box over here, which contains a thermostat and an electronic valve. So it automatically turns the misters on when it gets hot and turns them off when it cools back down. Now we've been using this system for about four years now and it's been working flawlessly, except I do have a use for another one somewhere else. So I figured I may as well take you along with me and show you how to build one. Let's get started. Now the materials that you're gonna need for this are some type of weatherproof outdoor enclosure, a 120 volt solenoid valve, a temperature controller, an extension cord, a scrap piece of half inch PVC pipe, about this length is more than enough, two slip to female PVC couplers, two slip to hose thread PVC adapters, either male or female, however you want to hook yours up, I'm using two male connectors, a cord connector and wire of enough different colors to keep everything separate. Optionally, if you want to control more than just the misters, such as a fan as well, you'll want one of these uh, waterproof marine grade outlets. I'll be mounting the valve in the bottom back half of the box. So I drilled a 7 8 inch hole in line with where I wanted one of the pipes to come in. I then installed couplers on both ends of the valve. Test fit one of the pipes. Marked and drilled a second hole. and primed and glued the pieces. I could then cut them to length. and install the hose connectors. The valve is secured in place and doesn't move. Since I'm gonna be installing my outlet over here on this side, I'll be mounting the temperature controller off center to give everything enough room. I'll start by removing this backing plate and tracing out a mounting hole. I then cut it out with a roto zip, but did not mount the controller yet. First, I needed to wire it. Slots one and two are for the controller's own power, hot and neutral. It doesn't matter which is which. These two are for the temperature sensor, which I can't install yet and seven and eight are for the cooling circuit. One for line power and one for the switched load. I could then install the controller through the hole I cut. Secure it with the provided plastic clips and seal it with a generous amount of caulk. 
we're going for functional here, not necessarily pretty. While the caulking dried, I went ahead and drilled another 7 8 inch hole for the cord connector. Cut off the end of my extension cord and installed it into the box. I then stripped the cord and started connecting wires using these Wago lever nuts. Please note that's way go and not way goo. Anyone else hungry for some steak? I installed a ground wire under one of the screws in the metal valve housing. And connected it with the wire from the cord. I then drilled a hole for my outlet. Wired it up. And installed it through the hole. before connecting the ground wire with the others. I then wired the valve with a couple of female connectors and joined all the neutrals together. I then joined the incoming hot, power to the controller, and one side of the cooling circuit. I connected the other side of the cooling circuit to the hots from the valve and outlet. I drilled a small hole in the top of the box for the temperature sensor. And wired it to the proper terminals on the controller. After reinstalling this back piece, which probably isn't completely necessary, the box can be screwed shut. I placed a half inch cap over the temperature probe to keep it out of direct sunlight and prevent water intrusion and sealed around the pipes just in case. A small hole in the bottom ensures that any water that does get in has a way out, and I'll know if the internals ever start leaking. And now I'm going to go over programming the controller. First, I'm going to turn it on by holding down the power button. I did hear and feel the solenoid activate, so I know it is working. To access the settings, you hold down the S button here. And the first setting, TS, that is your temperature setting. It came set at 50 and at 74 in my garage, so that's why the solenoid activated immediately. I'm going to put it at 90 for uh, outdoor use because that's when I want my misters to come on. And I'm going to press S to save the setting. If I back out of the menu by pressing power, the solenoid turned off because it's now below 90. It's now on heat mode, which doesn't actually matter because I don't have anything connected to the heat output. So I'm going to go back into the settings menu and just go over the other options here. DS is differential. At a default setting of 3, that means the uh, misters would come on at 93 degrees and go off at 90. I don't want that since I'm just basing it all off of outside temperature, so I'm going to set that to the lowest value of 1. And it looks like it kicked me out of the menu here because I took too long. So I'll set that back to 1. PT is compressor delay. Since we're not using a compressor, we'll leave that alone. CA is calibration. Uh, I don't care exactly how accurate this is, so I'll leave that at 0. CF is uh, Fahrenheit and Celsius. I'm going to leave that at Fahrenheit since that's what I'm familiar with. And here is a simple test setup I've come up with. Let's start by turning on the water. As you can see, my hose is connected to the controller through this uh, washing machine supply hose. The fan currently is not blowing and the misters are not on but the fan is plugged into the outlet on the controller and the misters are connected to the uh, water output. It's currently 90.9 .9 degrees, so let's apply a little heat. Success! 
with the help of a wet paper towel and by creepily blowing on it, all that's left to do is make sure it turns off when things cool down. So if you found this video interesting or might even want to think about making one of these yourself, uh, please like the video and leave a comment below. And uh, please feel free to subscribe to this channel for more random projects like this one. Thanks for watching.